Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside Loino's Theater Faculty Roundtable. I'm Doug Umberger from the Admissions Office, and I have several very special guests here today from the Department of Theater Arts and Dance. If you all don't mind, let's just take a moment. We can go around, briefly introduce yourselves, your name, um, title, if you wish, you know, the classes that you teach, and just a general understanding of your role at Loyola, and we'll, we'll be kind and do ladies first. So Casey, if you want to start us off. My name's Casey Thomasy. I am the costume director here at Loyola and I teach Stagecraft 1 and 2. Um, that also has a lab attached to it. And I also teach play production, various play production courses, which means um, any production that our students are involved in, they get a credit, whether it be for crew or performance. And I supervise the uh, costume portion of that credit. And my role here at Loyola is that I um, design the shows when necessary. I design for our, our main stage season, but I also um, teach our students how to sew and how um, what the world of costume design is all about and um, how to kind of go about that as a young artist. Thanks, Casey. Sal, how about we head over to you? Hi, uh, my name's Sal Menino. Uh, I am the producer and artistic director here in the Department of Theater, Arts, and Dance. Uh, I teach a variety of classes from uh, directing and advanced directing to theater management, playwriting workshop, uh, and audition techniques. Thank you much. Last but not least, Duncan. Hello, I'm Duncan Beck, director here. Uh, so I handle um, sets and lights and sound and props. Um, I teach Stagecraft 1 and 2 with Casey uh, and some play production. So I advise student designers and technicians uh, and a little bit of this and that here and there. Awesome. Thanks, friends. Thank you. Now, for viewers, whether you're students who are literally just starting your college search or whether you've been admitted, whether you're a parent, whether you're a counselor, you know, I hope to keep this conversation as the moderator pretty casual and and certainly conversational and and hopefully you'll walk away with just a little bit of a better understanding on how, you know, Loyola and the Wolfpack and the city of New Orleans is just a little more unique from the rest when it comes to theater arts and, and musical theater and the like. Now, I don't I don't even think the three of you knew this before, before the recording, but I was a theater minor when I was an undergraduate many moons ago. Um, so I finally get to sort of manifest this minor, and I feel like my whole life has been culminating to this very moment. I'm kidding. It's fine. Um, so interestingly, I'm, I'm regionally based in Washington, D.C., and I also teach in the College of Music and Media in the same very department as a speech instructor. So it's always a pleasure to go down to New Orleans and to be a little bit farther removed. And whenever I'm down, I, I always year to year have an opportunity to watch one or even two shows a season. So I do feel like I have a little bit of a dotted line to the three of you. So I'm excited to have this conversation. So I guess a good place to start is, and, and Sal, as creative director, I will kick this to you first and foremost, but do you mind just sharing a little bit more about what goes into, I guess, selecting a theatrical season at Loyola? What is your creative, you know, direction or, or inspiration? All of it, whatever you want to share, I think would be really helpful as a starting point for us. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, in any art, uh, in any type of educational setting where you're studying an art form, the idea of putting the work into practice is really important. So uh, it's not just about learning about what's happened it's actually about the the process of making work and making art um, so the productions that we produce are a huge part of our curriculum and uh i'd say one of the the places where we see the most growth in our department in our students so um you know like most places we have a, a curated season uh we produce uh currently we produce two shows in the fall and two shows in the spring um, those shows have traditionally been 
whether they're classic works like a Shakespeare piece to a contemporary musical or a contemporary play. Um, we've made a big shift over the past uh, couple years of uh, really finding the interest from our students to create new work. So that's one thing that's definitely found a place in our seasons of how do we uh, not just look back on things that have been published and plays that have been produced, um, you know, on Broadway or regionally, but also allowing our students the opportunity to dive in and create something from scratch. Uh, we always say, like, you should be making art about the things that, like, when you go to bed at night, you can't stop thinking about and you wake up and you're thinking about it first thing in the morning. That's what you need to be making work about. And that's what you need to be talking about as artists. So we need to not be waiting for those opportunities for somebody to present it. We're really trying to engage our students in really taking the initiative and having that entrepreneurial uh, spirit to go after what they, they want. So um, we're starting moving forward. We're producing uh, classic plays, contemporary plays, musicals, and this new work. We're having this this new wing of our season that's really going to focus on the development process and letting our students not just see a product, but letting them see the process. Um, it's so important in, uh, in a creative uh, environment to see how things are created and not just see the end result. And normally as audiences, we only get the end result, but there's so much more to that. And we really are trying to embrace that in our season, letting our students see that. Um, we really believe that uh, people come first. You know, theater is a collaborative environment. We don't make theater by ourselves. So, you know, people are the most. So when we're choosing a season, no, we're not looking at plays and picking the plays and then finding directors to direct those plays. We're trying to find the people who we want with our students and in the environment and then collaboratively coming to a decision about a project that's mutually beneficial for both the director and for uh, our student artists here. And we feel like when that happens, we're really striking a chord where everybody's showing up very charged and ready to work every day. Nobody, it doesn't feel like work. It really feels like a passion project for everybody involved, particularly those guest directors, because uh, we're, we're a small but mighty program. So um, a lot of our directors for shows are guest artists from the community and around the country who are visiting here in New Orleans. And really, we're trying to take advantage of that opportunity that they can be here and work. And when you're working professionally, it's so tough to work on those passion projects, to find the time and the, the places and the money and the resources. So here at Loyola, we can help kind of bridge that gap for guest artists to be like, I really want to work on this. And like, great, come and do it here. Right. We have students who are really eager and hungry and ready to work and um, they're they're ready for the challenge. And uh, our guest directors really respond to that. And it's really relationship with the community because nobody comes here once and does a little one off and leaves. We seem to have this real uh, reciprocal process of everybody coming back, whether that's guest artists or our students who have graduated and as alumni, they're coming back to work on projects or to direct projects or to assistant director, design a project. And that's really exciting. You know, it's, we're getting past that point of our community is just the students who are enrolled right now. Our community is just continuing to blossom and grow. And um, that's really important to the three of us. Uh, you know, we, we talk constantly about the shows. It's really a, a big focus of our work. So, um, it's been really nice to to share those values and to share those things that we want. And the students are really embracing it too. So we're really excited to see how it's going to continue to grow and evolve. Um, you know, what we have right now is a system that's in place that is made to expand and to grow and not just stay the same, you know, and I think that's what we want to teach our students is every step, every day is a step forward. You know, we want to just keep growing and be a better artist and be a better person every day here. Sal, you are inspiring me to come back for the full <laughs> theater program. I might might have to up the up the minor. Do change you, that minor to a major. Changing the minor to a major. Um, do you mind sharing just one either student anecdote or success story when it comes to the new work specifically? Um, sure. And I guess there's a little bit on both sides of the the coin here. So. 
we recently partnered with a guest artist. His name was Justin Prescott. Justin's been in, I think, almost a dozen Broadway shows, uh, including uh, the new production of Funny Girl that's about to open uh, pretty soon in 2022. And um, he's, you know, always been in these professional environments where he's been called into a room and to be a dancer for other people. And I could tell there was just something lingering. He wanted to do more. So he was working here as a guest artist. And so well, what do you want to create? And he pitched up and we said, great, let's, let's make this happen. Um, and we quickly learned that our students have never worked like this before. So a lot of fear as normal when you're kind of, uh, you have to be vulnerable in a, in a professional situation. Uh, it's a scary process for any artist, much less uh, an emerging artist, like a student, you know? Um, and the way we framed this conversation was works in progress need to have conversations. So we shared the work that they created in, in the room, uh, like a typical performance. But after that performance, we, we closed every performance with a talk back with the audience, because we wanted this to be a reciprocal conversation to help the piece grow and to find where it goes next. Um, and there was, uh, there were, there were so many of these moments that really happened in those conversations where I think the students started to realize why we do what we do. And out of that, I, the amount of students who have kind of come forward and been like, great, I've been writing something great. I have this idea. It's a wild idea that I've just been throwing something against the wall and I need some space. And, um, it, you know, I know this isn't quite a specific example to one specific student, but I, I do think it was, that was a contagious moment for our community where they saw the value of the performance, but they saw the value of the process. And it actually takes a lot of work and we're not here to, uh, you know, make millions of dollars. That's not what we do in theater. We don't find ourselves in this field um, for financial success. We find it for uh, spiritual success, emotional success, mental success, you know, just to feel better and to continue to grow and to tell stories and to change the world, hopefully, right? Like if we change how one person's thinking about something, uh, we're doing our job. So I think that really caught on with our students to get away from this, like, oh, I'm here for entertainment. No, I'm actually here to like serve myself and to serve my community and the people around me to be better and to do better every day. Thank you. Yeah, I was, this was before we were sort of notified with the little update or whatever, but when I was watching the Tonys and I, I saw the, the featured dance, I'm like, was that Justin? <laughs> and, and then of course, so just to have that exposure and to see that there are so many rivers and roads that are gone back to Loyola New Orleans just in the past year has been really, really inspirational to see. And, and I think that's a nice segue to both Casey and Duncan and their roles respectively. Um, sort of on the on the back end, but Casey, if you don't mind starting us off, now I had taught for a May semester directly adjacent to your costume studio, and it was so cool just over the summer watching you with the mannequin that's directly behind you, just in and away doing what you need to do. I would love to have students and and families just hear a little bit more about the lay of the land. It's such a cool space. Sure. Um, yeah. So our costume shop is located on the sixth floor of Monroe Hall, um, tucked away in a little corner. Um, and most people don't even know that it's there. So sometimes when my door is open, I'll just have random students walk in and be like, what is this place? Um, and it's so cool and beautiful. And um, that's because it is. It's a beautiful space. It's probably the prettiest uh most organized costume shop I've ever been in. Um, it has these gorgeous floor to ceiling uh, windows all around. So natural light is so important to our straining eyes as we sew and um, just seeing color in a different, true, natural way. And um, so it, not only does it have beautiful natural light, but we also have a very um, decked out space in terms of sewing machines and equipment. We have um, both domestic and industrial machines for both our beginner sewers all the way to our advanced sewers. Um, and we have 
yes, tons of mannequin friends that live in the shop. And we have a gorgeous um, dye room, which features an industrial dye vat that allows us to dye many yards of fabric. Um, and uh, we can, we have this cool hood that we can uh, spray paint inside so we don't have to kind of truck down six floors and find an alley somewhere to do our, our costume painting um, safely. And uh, so our space is really impressive. People walk into our costume shop usually and are like, this is so cool. So the energy is always in the room. Um, and it's kind of the place where the students like to come and hang out and see what's going on, um, <laughs> which can be both distracting and amazing <laughs> at the same time. But um, it's definitely a fun place to be. Lots of lots of things going on in the costume shop. Had the the pleasure of going down in and around the holidays, but y'all were doing um, intimate apparel and it was such an, an impressive feat of a show and production. But obviously I think any member of the audience, first and foremost, the thing that comes to their mind is holy cow, the costumes. <laughs> would love to hear just a little bit more about the student perspective and, and process um, just to get that, that production afloat. Sure thing. So um, that production is unique um, because it's kind of a costume designer's dream. Not only is it a, a beautiful show costume wise visually um, because of the time period is is turn of the century. So it's early turn of the century in New York City. Um, and, you know, you've got corsets, you've got, you know, all of these layers for the women's wear, you've got full three piece suits for men. Um, yeah, it's a costume de designer's dream that show. And I would have to say safely say, and um, so that one is special because it's also about um, a seamstress. It's also about a journey of, of, of the painstakingly and oftentimes tedious journey one takes to build a garment, um, one of the toughest garments, in fact, to build, which is a so that that show brings in lots of course corsetry, which um, this past semester we our students were able to um, have a hand in building five different turn of the century corsets. Um, and it's hard work. And they realized as soon as we started building um, these corsets, how much work it actually is. And I think it really, it helped some of them actually connect to their characters better because they were like, this takes forever to build. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of work. Um, not only is it beautiful, but it's also, it's also a, a labor of love, if you will. Um, and uh, the student Im involvement in the show is really special because um, one of our, our very own students, a junior, uh, Grace Smith, was able to take this project on, this massive project on, as a student designer. So um, it was not designed by me. I w functioned as a supervisor, as a mentor, as a stitcher, as a draper, but not quite as the designer. So we had a student choosing fabrics and going fabric shopping and making these design decisions that they've been trained through our programs here, through classes and, and you know, the time spent working on productions that they were able to take the lead on this one, which was a big undertaking, especially, you know, for an undergraduate, the fact that we do not have a graduate program, theater program, and they're doing graduate level work, I think is impressive um, for a young artist. So what that does is they leave here with a very impressive portfolio um, and of work that they did um, unexpectedly as an undergrad. Good context, thank you. and. It's endearing just the same, knowing that you and the rest of you know the faculty and staff are you know just mentoring the students through that process. And I think this is a good bridge for you and Duncan. I know collectively the three of you have, I'm sure, just closets full of accolades and awards and things and whatnot. But 
it must be really neat to have the experiences in the greater sort of New Orleans theater community. And I know far beyond, um, in some cases, I believe internationally. <laughs> so just curious, the two of you, your, your perspectives and, and feedback on how you brought that into your nine to fives here at Loyola. Sure. I, I, I wouldn't mind not to jump on Duncan's time, but I, I definitely, when I, when I got this job, I told our department chair, Patrick D Jindusa, I said, why do all the good ones leave? They all, they get educated in New Orleans and they leave and they go to New York or LA and they don't stay in New Orleans oftentimes. Um, and that's just for whatever reason, you know, they're on their own journey, but I, told him in my interview to get the job, I said, I would really love to stock New Orleans with some super talented artists um, because the jobs are, are here. There are jobs here for um, unexpectedly, actually. Um, we have a small but mighty uh, New Orleans theater community that both Duncan and I have the pleasure of um, working with some incredible artists here locally. Um, every summer I do summer stock work. And um, last summer even, I had uh, three of my students that joined me in the summertime to um, act as um, assistant designers uh, for my professional gigs. So those are those are paid jobs that don't really have anything to do with Loyola, and they're working as paid artists, which can make the parents' ears perk up. I think um, that artists are actually paid <laughs> to to do these jobs that we're trained to do and educated to do. So um, it's it's pretty cool to kind of use your connections with your with your mentors. Um, and get plugged into the community and all of that goes on their resume, which is they don't they leave here with a resume that's not only educational work that they've done as a student for credit, but actually professional credits on their resume that they've actually gotten a paycheck for. And that work is so rewarding and it's and it's important as an artist to remember that we don't just do this for fun. We do it for a paycheck. You know, it's a job, you know, so it's a career. Duncan, I'll, I'll kick it over to you in just sort of this one-stop shop question. You can feel free to fall down the rabbit hole if you please. But again, just real world life experiences that you've had and then just sort of those additional student design, you know, opportunities that, that you teach regularly. Um, yeah, sure. So Casey and I started at the same time and we had uh, and still do work together in the summers uh, doing summer stock. With students, um, there's always opportunities for students to join us on those gigs. Um, I spent some time in the past working uh, in theaters in the area. And I sort of bounced into the music world for a while uh, for an international music tour for Leon Bridges. Uh, and then started here. It was such a great uh, sort of return back to the theater community. Um, because that's sort of where I started. I started freelancing into local companies and it's nice to get back to making theater again, uh, and particularly work. And so it's rewarding to see what students that he's been, teaching, uh, go on. To. And even just from the short time frame of, we teach their first class in the department. Finding a main stage show uh, and really doing a fantastic job. So um, it's nice to sort of plant that seed early that um, you can sort of spread your talents um, outside of the theater, but also outside of just performing, right? So uh, we like to get those students who maybe have that little interest in design sort of channeled into that early and know that they have these opportunities to do realized designs uh, as part of our main stage series. So that's something I think we're both pretty proud of. Happy that you dropped the Leon Bridges bit leading. <laughs> I know it's, it, it's quite a, a nice little name drop from time to time. So my, my last question for the three of you folks, and Duncan, we will start with you just to go in sort of reverse order here. 
Um, it might be an ambiguous question, uh, you know, apologies in advance, but just one general piece of advice for an aspiring theater college student. Um, I think the three of you have such unique perspectives and um, I think this conversation has been really substantive and it's going to resonate with them, you know, one way or another, but yeah, we'll, we'll leave it all out on the dance floor for this final question. What do you got? Gosh. Yeah. I, so I think my piece of advice um, is that there's a lot more to the theater world than just performing. So if you have an interest in designing or any sort of technology, um, we're happy to facilitate that at Loyola. Uh, the nice thing about working in a scene shop is you can never have the wrong color hair, be too tall or be too old or too young. So come on in and we'll, uh, we'll help you get where you wanna go. How about you? Um, yeah, I would, just to piggyback on that, Theater, theater is an actual real major. Don't let anyone tell you different. Um, so, you know, if you've, if your parents are begging you to have a backup plan, um, as mine were, and many years ago when I was uh, an undergrad, um, they said, please, Casey, major in something realistic, not theater. But um, they've actually seen that I've made a career out of out of theater and that I've, I'm a working artist. And I think that's important for parents to hear that it's not just a pipe dream. It's a reality. It's, um, it's something that, you know, I wake up every morning and I love my job. I love the people that I work with. I, you know, Duncan and Sal are such special and Patrick are so, such special humans that I get to collaborate with on a daily basis. And, um, and, and, what more could you want as a as a young person going into a, a field that you know requires you to be around people? You know, you get to be around the best people. Theater people are cool, and um, we are fun, but we also work really, really hard and have some of the most underrated work ethic in in the biz. I think. <laughs> okay, with you, I'm going to name this session. Theater people are cool. And that's going to be the title. Sal, close this out. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of jumping off of where Duncan and Casey kind of started, I, I, you know, theater, it's not your field. It's not what you do. It's very difficult to understand what are the avenues? Where do you go? And we only see so much, right? We only see what's on Broadway. We only see this big success. That's a really small percentage, like one or two percent of the people working. And when I say working, I mean like full time job working. That's, that's a very small percentage, but that's really where the attention goes. But the other 98 percent of us are really grinding every day. And that is the most exciting part of it. There, there's just so much to uncover. So if I'm going to leave you with anything, I'm going to do a little Walt Whitman here. Be curious, not judgmental. That's what you need to take forward. Well, Ted Lasso, maybe too. So there you go. Walt Whitman and, and Ted Lasso. There's no better way to bookend this entire session. Thank the two of you so much for you know carving out just a little bit of time and and sharing you know your your experiences um, for the greater Loyola community. You know, as a as a colleague in some senses, but more so as sort of a an audience member. It, it's inspiring, and I'm happy to have. Had a little bit of time here just to shoot the breeze with the three of you. Um, just some really quick housekeeping items, folks, before you close out here. If you haven't already done so, watch the the Glow in the Studio video within Inside Bueno. It, it features, and for the sake of the dramatic stars, the theater department chair, Patrick Gunduza, in um, a very fascinating three to four minute video, but showing you some of the studio space a little bit further there. And just continue to poke around the site you know, you're going to find a bunch of different webinars and, and interviews like this for Loyola's academics and student life and financial aid and, and all things admission. So enjoy Inside Loy Now. Just keep going around. I um, hope you enjoyed this time. And to the three of you, my theater colleagues, I hope you break a leg for the rest of the season and, and into the year. Take good care. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Doug.